Welcome to my Electrum Online. In the previous video, we had the same setup. We had a rod, which was first vertical, and then we had a continuous force or a constant force of a half a mg, half times the weight of the rod, pulling on one corner, pulling the rod to a horizontal position, and we had to calculate the velocity of the end point of the rod at that very moment in time when the rod was horizontal. But then in this video, we want to explore what the forces are caused by the pivot on the rod, the pivot where the rod is turning about. Now, the forces that we can see are twofold. We have the force pulling on the end of the rod, plus we have the weight of the rod that acts through the center of mass. And so there needs to be an opposing force because we know that the sum of the forces must add up to zero, both in the x and in the y direction. So since they want us to find both the vertical and the horizontal forces, let's set up the two equations that allow us to do so. So first we'll go in the vertical direction. The sum, let's do it over here, the sum of all the forces in the y direction is equal to zero. They have to be in that particular case. And so we know there must be an opposing force in the opposite direction going upward. So let's call that the force of the pivot. And all these three forces must add up to zero. So therefore, we can say that this is the force of the pivot in the positive direction, minus 1 half mg and minus mg. Let's go ahead and do that so we don't confuse anything. And so solving for the force of the pivot, force on the pivot is equal to, that would be 1 half mg plus mg. So in other words, the pivot, the force on the pivot in the vertical direction is equal to 3 halves the weight of the rod. It's simply the sum of the two forces. Seems kind of odd. Why is that so? Because we have this force acting at the edge of the rod, but it turns out it doesn't really matter. The sum of the force in the y direction must, must equal zero. Another way of looking at it is that we can look at the two forces separately. We have the force acting down here, which is F equals mg, or a half mg. And whenever we have a force acting not through the point of rotation, so therefore we, we create a torque, there will be an opposing force acting through the point of rotation. And these two forces are what we call a force couple. That will always happen. The magnitude of the forces are equal, the directions are in opposite directions. And so that is normal. That means that this force here causing a torque about this point of rotation then causes a force couple to exist, another force equal magnitude in the opposite direction. In addition to this, we have the weight of the rod pulling down on the, on the pin here about which, uh, about which the, uh, the beam or the rod is rotating, and so we have what we call a normal force pushing back, which then has to be equal to the weight of the force due to gravity. So then when we add these two together, the, this force, part of the force couple, plus the opposing force of the weight of gravity, when we add them together, we then get the total force on the pin in the vertical direction. What about the horizontal direction? Well, you can see that in this very moment, there's no forces acting in the horizontal direction. Therefore, there doesn't have to be an opposing force on the pin. So we can then say that the sum of the forces in the x direction add up to zero, and there are no forces in the x direction. So that's the result right there. No forces at all in the x direction, only in the vertical direction. And so that's how we know all the forces acting on the pin and from the pin to the rod in this particular case. And that is how it's done.